All right. Good morning. Uh, my name is Elizabeth McCauley. I'm lead pastor here at Christ United Methodist Church. And um, I am, much like Stephen Colbert and others, uh, in an empty space, uh, hoping to connect uh, with y'all. Uh, we are uh, not holding corporate worship right now at Christ United Methodist Church in Rochester, uh, but we do believe that the Spirit is more powerful than any old walls. Uh, so we are glad that you have joined us here at our Arise worship service, and we are uh, hopeful that when we have uh, an opportunity for us to pray together, as we do in this service, that you will put your prayer requests in the comments section, and uh, we'll be able to hear those prayers and pray them together. Uh, we're just making this up as we go. Who knows what will happen? Um, we are in the season of Lent. We are reading together Amy Jill Levine's book uh, called uh, Entering the Passion of Jesus. And this week, uh, the theme was Risking Challenge. And... Well, we are experiencing challenge, are we not? Uh, and we are risking in the way of Jesus. So uh, we are so moved that you are here. I'm so grateful for our band, who is here as well, and um, our uh, beautiful people up in the booth, and uh, for all the people who call this church their heart home. Uh, and hopefully many who have never joined us, uh, but if you're with us today, I hope you can feel the power and the promise of God, and we're going to sing, because that's what we do. We're going to open our hearts to worship, uh, um, and that's what I'm inviting you to do. Our band will lead us. The words are on the screen, and uh, make some noise wherever you are. Let's enter into worship. Jira, 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 Share the well, share with your brother, share the well, my friend. It takes a deeper well to love one another. Share the well, my friend. Jira, 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 Do you think the water knows? Flowing down the mountain thaw Finally to find repose For any soul who cares to draw Skidder keepers of this earth On their way to join the flow Cast aside and left to thirst Tell me now it is not so Share the well, share with your brother Share the well, my friend Deeper well to love one another, share the well, my friend. God's creatures share the water hole. The blessed day the monsoon comes. In its image we are wove every likeness, everyone. Cashmere to Kerala, under every banyan tree. Mothers for their children cry with empty jar and bamboo. Deeper well to love one another, share the well, my friend. Jira, 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 Share the well, share with your sister, share the well, my friend. It takes a deeper well to love one another, share the well, my friend. Share the well, share with your brother, share the well, my friend. Take a deeper well, love one another, share the well, my friend. Jira, 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 Jira,
the opportunity to join together in prayer, which is great gift. Uh, generally in this service, uh, we ask people for their prayer concerns, and so I'm hoping that perhaps you did type in a prayer in the comments section. And if you haven't thus far, um, we'll get better at this, I'm afraid, uh, as the weeks may go by. Um, but for um, for us to know, it doesn't take physical proximity to be in prayer together. Uh, so uh, if we haven't heard of prayers from you, I can only imagine or surmise what it might be we are all praying about on this day. So would you join me, please, in a time of prayer? calling you hear us calling Abba Father you hear us calling you hear us calling Holy Mother God have mercy Christ have mercy Gracious God, we bring before you this astoundingly intimate world in which we live. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in China and in Italy and in the United States of America, each one of us aware that we are mortal and we are vulnerable and we are so powerfully connected. So in this time, when we are regarding each other, in ways we have not before, help us to see the power of our connection rather than the barbed wire of fear. As we practice exquisite self-care, as we practice the holy art of washing our hands, as we practice the power of distancing ourselves, help us to know you are in this, you are in this, you are in this. Hear our prayer. Amen. 
God, we ask that you sustain healthcare workers, that you provide them with a sense of our gratitude for the ways that they are on the front lines of care in these days. So for chaplains in hospitals and for healers in clinics and hospitals and for those who are seeking antidotes to this virus and to each one of us called to care, Sustain us, bless us, help us to know we do no thing alone. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba, Father. You hear us calling. Gracious God, we ask for the wisdom to quiet our hearts, to ground them in your love. Help us to practice mercy in the places we find ourselves, whether we're in our homes, whether we're out in the community. Help us so to live that we use this time to further develop our sense of awe in the power that you have in the ways that you call us whether it's reading scripture or lighting candles or looking out our window and seeing the beauty around us we pray for ground in these days gracious god in your mercy hear our prayer You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba, Father. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Holy Mother. God has. pray in the healing, powerful name of your Son, Jesus, in whose way we seek to live. Amen, amen, amen. So we live in challenging times. During such times when our hearts are raw and our need for hope is exquisitely keen, we are blessed during such times, and maybe because our hearts are 
peculiarly open uh, with theologians and artists and others who create things that open us and keep us mindful of the so much that is good in this world. Lynn Unger is a pastor who has written a poem for this time and it is called Pandemic and perhaps it will speak to your heart as it speaks to mine. She says, what if you thought of it in the ways that Jews consider the Sabbath the most sacred of times, cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down, and when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely this has become clear. Do not reach out with your hands, but reach out with your heart. Reach out with your words. Reach out all of the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health as long as we all shall live. This morning's lesson from the gospel comes from the book of Mark, and it contains an interchange uh, with the scribes and the Pharisees at the time of Jesus, the religious elite who are in uh, this chapter that we read in the book from uh, Amy Jill Levine. They seek to challenge Jesus. They keep wanting to trip him up, and I think that that happens often when people terrify us because they may creak open the rusty gates of our hearts with hope and rather than even allow ourselves to hope, we feel like it's easier to ridicule or challenge. But Jesus won't play the game with them. So there's an interchange between the scribes and the Pharisees and Jesus in which they ask him, all right, teacher, because they see that he's become powerful and he's drawing crowds and people are beginning to hope and what can be more terrifying than that? What they say to him is, all right, rabbi, teacher, what is the most important commandment? What is the most important teaching in scripture? And Jesus draws from his learning as a Jew and he replies to them with the great teaching that is found in the book of Deuteronomy from the Shema about how it is our job as faithful followers of God and God's teaching is to love God with everything we have and Jesus adds this bit to that teaching so here's what happens one of the religious scholars came up and hearing the lively exchanges of question and answer and seeing how sharp Jesus was in his answers, the scholar put it in his question, what is the most important of all the commandments? And Jesus said, the first importance is this, listen, listen, Israel, the Lord your God is one, so love the Lord your God with all of your passion and with all of your prayer and with all of your intelligence and all of your energy. And here is the second, love others as well as you love yourself. There is no other commandment that ranks with these. Love God with everything you have, your passion, your intelligence, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. The most important things. So in confirmation classes last Wednesday, before everything came to a screeching halt, as far as people coming together, uh, we explore the power of this teaching that Jesus shares about the most important thing and how it is we're called to love God and love our neighbor. And in class, we listed together some of the social issues of the day, some of the brokenness that the students and their parents, because we do confirmation uh, with uh, parents and students together, um, 
experience on an everyday basis some of the ways that there is brokenness in creation. And so we talked about the power and the heartbreak of loneliness and poverty and immigration uh, issues and families separated at borders and how it is LGBTQI kids and others are pushed out of community and how can those things be. And what we did is we listed all of those things on a whiteboard and then we said, all right, these things are what would happen if you as an individual decided that you were going to put over that issue, that gaping wound of pain, what would happen if you lived the teachings of Jesus and decided that you were going to love God with all the power you had and you were going to love your neighbor with all the power you had around this issue? And the youth came up and the parents came up with beautiful antidotes to the power of the fracturing of this world. And they, and certainly I, was moved by the ways that the ways we embrace love and decide to embody love together change the world and they change us if we are intentional about living the love ethic of Jesus Christ so we are living that love ethic in this challenging time in which we find ourselves choosing to suspend in-person worship was one of the hardest choices I've made I have to tell you I've been in ministry 25 years and I live in Minnesota and I don't know that we've ever canceled worship uh, because if I figure if I can get through a snowdrift, I'm going to get to church and other people will as well and they do God bless them them. But as we continued, as we consulted medical personnel, and as we explored what it means to love our neighbor as ourselves, and as we imagined in our hearts the faithful people who we knew would come to worship, regardless of whether they were taking a risk with their health or not, and as we uh, consider the medical personnel who we want to make sure we are not contributing to the spread of any sort of virus action, uh, and we want to protect them in the ways that we can, um, it seemed that there was no other choice but to have worship in an empty space and connect electronically. So by choosing not to offer in-person worship, I think we're living the love ethic of Jesus by by physically distancing ourselves from each other. And I have to tell you, it's painful. I don't like the way this feels at all. But here is what we know. And here is what this pandemic is teaching us in this time. God is with us. And God's connection with us and the connection we share with each other transcends any kind of physical need to be together. So God is in this prayed in space. God is in all spaces. We may not be physically together in this space, but your souls are here. I look around at these chairs and I know where you sit. Um, and, uh, And I think of you. And I'm praying for you. And I trust that you are praying for all of this world. So wherever we are, we carry each other in our hearts and God is present too. And together we get to live the promise of Jesus no matter where we are. What Jesus taught is that the advocate, the Holy Spirit would come into this world, has come into this world, and that spirit will hold us in times of intense fear as well as in times of astounding joy with every breath we breathe. God is inspiring us. We are taking into our very bodies the promises that God has given and the promises we get to live together. We are one in Christ Jesus. Whether we sit beside each other in these blue chairs in this ECC space or whether we're home in our jammies on the couch. And if you are, good for you. I envy you. So anyway, we promise... 
we promise to hold to our hearts this reminder that God is in this with us and we are bound by holy power and all of creation we acknowledge. I don't know, this pandemic is teaching us that there is no such thing as any wall that can separate us from each other or from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No ethnicity, no difference between us. We are all human creatures created by God who loves us and God is in the middle of this struggle with us. So we are practicing the love of Christ Jesus by social distancing, by meticulous hand washing, and living with the awareness that everything that we do every day has the power to impact so many people, the ways we love, the ways we care for each other. And while we live this social distancing, we yet proclaim the good news that we are connected in ways unfettered by flesh. So we will, at this church, continue to offer worship. Uh, starting next week, this service will be offered at 10 o'clock. So we'll have 9 o'clock live stream from the sanctuary. 10 o'clock, we'll worship here in the ECC. Those are available on Facebook. We also have a YouTube channel uh, that is on our, fa our uh, pardon me, website. We'll be sending out daily emails. If you're not on our email list, please let the office know. Email at cumethodist.com. We'll get you on the mailing list. We're sending out a daily Lenten devotional. At 10 o'clock, beginning on Tuesday, we'll have morning prayer with one of our pastors every day at 10 o'clock. You can tune into Facebook so that we have a way to connect. We also have a team of people that will be committing themselves to doing phone calling so that we can stay connected with uh, people so that in this time of social, uh, perhaps a sense of feeling isolated and alone and perhaps afraid, um, we will stay connected with each other. So um, our office is open during this time. Our pastors and our staff are here to serve you. Uh, you have each other and you have us. So I'm begging you, if you need anything from this church, uh, even if it's a, a voice on the other end of the phone, please call us. Let us know how we can be of service to you uh, because even though we can't physically be present, we are so powerfully connected with each other. Um, one of the things that I've been um, obsessing over, I guess is a good way to put it, is uh, Facebook and Twitter and any other way I can learn how people are dealing with, uh, with this pandemic and the sense of fear. And uh, one of the things I ran across was this video uh, from Siena, Italy. Perhaps you have seen it as well. But this is what happens when people become afraid and refuse to feel isolated from each other. So can you roll that video for me and we'll show that? <laughs> Even the dogs. Don't you love it? Because we so need to lean in to being community together. I want to read that poem from Lynn Unger one more time. And you can find it online too. Uh, but it really blesses me. She says, What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life, center down, and when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. 
Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise the world your love for better or for worse in sickness and in health, as long as we all shall live. So we sing, you and I, people of Jesus. We sing from balconies and we sing in empty worship spaces. We work in hospitals. We gentle the fears of our children and our elders. We care for our elders. We pray and we love and we work. And we remain grounded in the teachings of Jesus Christ, who is made flesh in our lives. We choose day by day to live the love of God. We choose day by day to live love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We may be quarantined, but in such times, and maybe especially in such times, we know this good news. We are not alone. This is not a time of spiritual distancing. God is in this with us. Amen, amen, and amen. We enter into this time of offering without plates to pass. Um, We enter into this time of offering because knowing that we have something to give creation matters to our well-being and our spiritual sense of agency in this time. The United Methodist Church is on the front lines during this pandemic, um, as we are at all times. This church is not ceasing operations. Our staff is still working. We are all still committed to providing ministry. So you'll see on the screen a way to text to give. uh, And certainly we have electronic means and we're happy to receive your offerings via the mail. Uh, But it is our hope that you consider this church not a transactional investment, but a spiritual investment through this church we proclaim the love ethic of Jesus, and that work is needed now more than ever. So please, consider how it is uh, you share who you are and what you have with the world, and let us enter into this time of offering.
to do Ain't got much time There must be somebody Up above See, come on, everyone You got to get back an appropriate song <laughs> so god we ask your blessing on the gifts shared on this day our intentions our hopes our dreams our desires our anxieties we pray that you take all that we are and all that we have and use them in your service amen amen and amen so usually we do communion at this time but we're not going to do communion today but you know what i think we will next sunday so here's the deal lay in some grape juice and some bread, brothers and sisters, uh, because next week we'll, uh, we'll offer that sacrament uh, and we'll do it wherever you are. And well, we'll be here, so that's where I'm gonna be anyway. Um, so uh, we'll do that together next week. But in the meantime, we're gonna sing another song, yes? Mm -hmm. We did the prayer of gratitude, yes? Absolutely. All right, there we have it. One last tune, I would say, rise as you're able. But if you're in your jammies on the couch, don't be doing that. Let's sing. <laughs>
It's the tenant board that keeps me going home. But it's who I am that won't let me So uh, we are so blessed that you have joined us for this time. I sincerely want to thank the band. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, otherwise, I'd be really lonely. Uh, the world needs the people of Jesus as much as ever it has. So the ways you can practice love of God and love of yourself, we can't afford shame. And love of your neighbor in order that we might practice living in such a way that we contribute to the healing of creation now more than ever. May God be with you. Thank you. Keep praying. Amen. Cause I am here for a reason Sometimes in my tears I drown But I never let it get me down When negativity surrounds I know someday it'll all turn around Because all my life I've been praying for I've been praying for For the people to say eh, That we don't want to fight no more There'll be no more war And our children Lose when they feed on the souls of the innocent blood drenched pavement. Keep on moving, the water stay raging. In this maze, you can lose your way. You way. It might drive you crazy, but don't let it change you. No way. No way. All the tears I drown, but I never let it get me down. When negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around Because all my life I've been praying for, I've been praying for For the people to say eh, that we don't want to fight no more There'll be no more war, and our children will play One day, one day, one day, one day the same stop with the violence stop with the hate someday we'll all be free and proud to be singing under the same sun singing songs of freedom like why everything's gonna be all right every little thing is gonna be all right all my life i've been waiting for i've been praying for for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more there'll be no more war and our children will play one day one day one day one day